A long tube covered with aluminum bronze lights when held in one hand and the other hand touching the terminal of the coil quite powerfully. It might be objected that the coatings are not sufficiently conducting. Still, even if they were highly resistant, they ought to screen the gas. They certainly screen it perfectly in a condition of rest, but not by far perfectly when charge is surging within the coating. But the loss of energy which, occur <coughs> excuse me, which occurs in the tube, notwithstanding the screen, is occasioned principally by the presence of the gas. End of quote. Okay, the, the dielectric induction through the interior of the earth communicates the energy from the transmitter to the receiver, as shown in figure four. Oh, sorry, I don't, that's one that's too hard to draw. Okay. Let me think briefly how I'm going to do this here. Okay, basically, it's just, I'll use figure three. What's that? Okay, I can describe figure four as what we have here. Okay, here's the this, this schematic drawing of the Tesla transformer with its elevated capacitance and propagating into the earth. Tesla uses the analogy here having a large balloon with a hand pump putting pressure waves in and out of the balloon and little pressure gauges all around the planet indicating receiving instruments. And of course the pointers on the pressure gauges all dance up and down in perfect correspondence with the hand pump. And then of course we have here the Wardenclyffe Tower attached to the earth doing the same thing electrically pumping dielectric energy in and out of the earth, which is captured by small receiving apparatus that take this dielectric induction and convert it back into electrical induction. Yes, there's a question. Yes, this, all, these books are all available from BSRF. Okay, so what we have here in the operating principles is the Tesla magnifying transmitter, being that it propagate, propagates energy through the ground, gives rise to the question is how do we ground the apparatus? Okay, since the so-called ground is now the hot terminal, in other words, the ground of the, the so-called ground of the Tesla coil is where the action is really going on. This the capacitance is not where you take your output from, in other words, the ball on the top. So being that the hot terminal also has to be the ground, it's not capable of serving as electrical reference point. Okay, now here's the most important feature of the Tesla magnifying transmitter. Okay, through the distributed mutual inductance in the coil and the odd function resonance, which basically boils down to the quarter wave resonance, you have a principle known as the virtual ground. So what the coil does is it establishes a, a ground reference system. Let's go to the schematic here. Your Tesla coil and its associated spherical capacitance act to bring a ground on this point of the transformer, leaving the earth connection hot. So the thing is capable of transmitting, and then you feed it through a regular radio frequency transformer, either resonant or not, and that delivers or abstracts energy from the system. You know, Tesla developed another device, which is the mechanical analog of this, and it's called the Telegeodynamic Oscillator. Now, this is an interesting device as it applies this principle with a small reciprocating air engine and a system of coils and capacitors with generator-type coupling through a linear generator to this mechanical system. And you find that this thing can shake stuff around without having anything to stand up against. It needs no wall or backing or anything in which to hold back to push against. So again, you have the virtual ground principle here. And this kind of breaks down the, the notions that were established by the Newtonian act ideas of action and reaction and opens up a whole new world for exploration. Okay, this reconfiguration of energy that goes on in here basically is the result of the separation of cause and effect in time or space and what's what we call hysteresis. So the TMT as well as the TGO, Tesla Geodynamic Oscillator, is capable of transmitting vibrations by virtue of the fact that it is self-referencing and doesn't require any electrical or mechanical reference from which to push against. This relates somewhat to the saying, give me a fulcrum and I'll move the earth. But Tesla found this type of fulcrum and not only did he move the earth and vibrate, you know, buildings in, near the point of breaking in New York, but he brought the entire electrical system of the earth into vibration, producing a standing lightning discharge in Colorado Springs and at that time, who knows where else at resonant nodes on the planet. Okay, the Tesla transponder or TMT can be divided into five distinct categories. 
or components. We have the earth, which serves as one part of the component, and then we have the reflecting capacitance, which serves as the complementary part. Okay, we have the energy transformer, where energy is either supplied or abstracted by a rotating apparatus or by, you know, resistance or negative resistance or thyrotrons or spark gaps or any one of the infinitude of methods. And then we have a source of magnetizing power, which is called, usually called a capacitor or dielectric inductor. Then we have the coupling transformer. What this does is couple, couple this electric energy into the, the transmission system established here, keeping a certain isolation between our power system or energy system and the oscillating system so it doesn't burn this out. Okay, and then we have finally the resonant coil, which does the real magic work here. This establishes the virtual ground, or what you might say dematerializes the electrical energy. In this arrangement, energy is continuously bounced back and forth between the Earth and the reflecting capacitance at point two there. Okay, some of this energy is refracted into the Earth and exists in the Earth is another coupled standing electric wave. Okay, this standing wave of energy pulsation in the system in the Earth is maintained by the energy transformer and kept into continuous oscillation. So as a pair of standing waves produced, there's a standing wave inside the TMT and then there's a standing wave in the Earth. Also, we have another standing wave which exists in time which is called the LC oscillation of the system, and that's the energy exchange between the energy transformer and the coupling transformer, this being magnetic and dissipative, and this being dielectric and generative of electrical energy. Okay, now the appearance that this is the output terminal of the coil is given by the fact being that you're standing on the Earth at that point, then everything around you is charged to the same potential, so to speak, or in the same electrical condition, so this appears to be neutral and this appears to be hot. But from the standpoint of the Earth, this is the neutral and this is the hot. So it's kind of a, um, a reverse situation we have here. It's not normally encountered in electrical work. Okay, the electrical conditions surrounding the TMT no longer can be represented by conventional or electromagnetic concepts because energy has been converted from these dimensions of material energy, which is given as mass times velocity squared, which breaks into mass multiplied by length squared divided by time squared into a new type of energy, the dimensions being given by Wilhelm Reich as length cubed divided by time squared, where mass becomes functionally equivalent to length. And this, of course, is a natural consequence of, of working with what's called skin effect in electrical conductors, where the mass of the conductor drops out of the picture, and really only the circumference of the conductor plays a part in the electrical phenomena. And that's what we're dealing with here with the Tesla transformers, extremely high frequency or high rate of electrical movement that completely circumvent the actions in the conductor. This dematerialized energy is the spatial analog of reactive power that's encountered in alternating current electrical systems. Okay, now what's of particular interest is that dielectric saturation that occurs around this area here produces organic type of waveforms that are all based on the patterns of life, such as the golden ratio and the fact that they can exist for a period of time after the source of power is removed, and many things that living objects usually only are capable of doing. Okay, and this eventually gets in, takes us to the theory of cosmic superimposition by Wilhelm Reich, and I've encountered this in practice by having two Tesla coils beam into a light bulb and having actual formations such as galaxies and nebula that you normally only see in deep space occur inside the light bulb in living color. Okay, the pulsations between the energy transformer, which is dielectric in nature, and the coupling transformer, oh, see, I already covered that, okay. So it can be seen that the TMT involves three distinct standing electric waves. There's the electric wave in the Earth, which we will call space dimensional. There's the electric wave of the LC oscillation, which we will call time dimensional. But in here, in the virtual grounding system, we have a new electrical wave, which we have to call extra dimensional. And Tesla referred to this as extra coil. Okay, this has a direct analogy in music where harmony is space dimensional and rhythm is time dimensional and melody is extra dimensional. So you can basically use music as an analog for this type of situation. And it's of particular interest to note that the uh, music developed by J.S. Bach, I have found to serve as one of the most fundamental expressions of electricity, even beyond Steinmetz or any of the more modern researchers that attempt to use conventional mathematics and words. And I intuited most of what I know about Tesla from the music of Bach. 
So we have what here is called a triple energy transient, which is an extremely difficult thing to analyze because we have three standing waves, each containing a pair of energy. So we have basically, more correctly, six forms of energy to bring into now not just regular resonance, but what's called consonant resonance. And this is the one thing that I found everybody misses in building Tesla apparatus, is bringing the device to this consonant resonance. And the main reason we have trouble with bringing these devices into these type of resonance is our science of algebra cannot deal with equations greater than the second degree. There's no symbolic expression for handling these kind of things, so we basically have no language for doing it. Okay, secondly here, what I'd like to cover basically is, is some of the history and elemental theory of induction in the dimension of time. Okay, if we go back, we find that the elemental principles of electrical induction were first discovered by Michael Faraday in the very early part of the 19th century. Faraday consi considered action at a distance through empty space highly improbable and developed his theory of contiguous particles in the ether and to 